What's up, boys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm on Madden 24, and I'm going to see if I can put an end to the Chiefs' kingdom with the best NFL criminals of all time. The Chiefs have had it too good for too long. They've now made it to the last four out of five Super Bowls. They're most likely going to win their third championship this decade, and the NFL couldn't be happier. But the people have had enough. It's one thing to have the AFC in a chokehold, but now Taylor Swift is getting more screen time than players trying to act like they're still conscious. State Farm is running out of ideas on how to use these two to sell me insurance. Kelsey is telling me what to do with my body. Mahomo is dancing on dead ones and inbred Britney keeps escaping her chains just to yell at hardworking Americans. Everyone thought Lamar was going to save the day in the AFC Championship, but Roger Goodell once again remains undefeated. So I thought it would be a good idea to hypothetically free slash bring back from the dead the worst criminals to ever step toe to heel in the gridiron and in the American prison system so they can take a shot at taking down the Chiefs. At starting QB, we have none other than Michael Vick. He's known to be a cheat code in every video game he's been in, but back in his day, he didn't have DraftKings to get his gambling fix in. So that resulted in Michael pursuing the dogfighting business, which landed him 21 months in federal prison. At backup QB, we have Big Ben, who was never too big on consent. At running back, we have none other than the OJ Simpson. He single-handedly started a race war in the 90s after he casually got away with a double homicide. The glove didn't fit, but what will fit is my merch at Frosty69.com. We just released some free OJ merch and all of the original Frosty merch is restocked. So make a difference today and go support a white-owned business. At wide receiver one, we have Tyreek Hill who had to leave Oklahoma State after beating and choking his pregnant girlfriend. Not cool. Michael Irvin is a 98 overall and on the squad. He's an interesting one. He's beaten three sexual assault allegations. He's been arrested for drug related charges twice. And to cap things off, he stabbed his teammate with scissors over a haircut. Still makes for a great analyst though. Des Bryant is the third wide receiver and is another domestic violence case. He slapped his mother. Starting at tight end. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Filling in at tight end, I have the legendary Jim Brown. Let's just say Jim Brown was trying to be the greatest trans woman boxer of all time, except he never made the transition. At left tackle, we have six foot eight Bryant McKinney. He found himself in a fight with a bouncer at a club in 2008 and left with battery, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Nate Newton is a six-time pro bowler, but also another fan of dogfighting. If that wasn't enough for him to make it on this team, he also liked to traffic large amounts of drugs. At center, we have Barrett Robbins, who earned his way here after one All-Pro and attempted murder and domestic assault. Although apparently there's not enough brain damage going around at the O-line, so there was an overall drop at this point. Chris Terry is a 75 overall who's on the team for felony drug possession, and Mark Chimura is filling in at tackle after filling up his babysitter in a bathroom. The Bills have a strong start on defense with 96 overall five-time pro bowler Mark Gastineau. He's been charged with assault and was arrested for picking up a package of pills at an airport. At the other defensive end, we have Dexter Manley, who did not say no to drugs. Leonard Little has white privilege written all over him. He crashed into and killed a woman while having a .19 blood alcohol content. Got away with probation and community service, and he still continues to drink and drive to this day. Jim Dunaway also got away with murdering his wife, just so happens he was teammates with OJ for three seasons of his career. Hollywood Henderson and Lawrence Taylor are both outside linebackers and have pretty similar stories. You'll have to look those up yourself. All I can say is no means no, even if they're in a wheelchair. On a somewhat lighter note, Ray Lewis is at middle linebacker. He was involved in a brawl that left two people dead. He escaped all the serious charges brought against him, but he was put on a year of probation for lying to a cop, so he still makes a list. Pac-Man Jones is here for you name it. Assault, vandalism, breaking probation, public intoxication, coercion, conspiracy, etc. Adrian Peterson is filling in at CB. He liked to beat his children. Ray Rice is in the same position, but he preferred to beat his wife. Darren Sharper gave Bill Cosby a run for his money. Speaking of money, Eugene Robinson was $40 too horny. And I thought these bills would be empty handed at the kicking positions, but Sebastian Janikowski has them covered with battery and bribery. There was no one to be found at punter, but Kareem Hunt has shown off his kicking ability before, so he'll fill in here. I put these bad news bills in the same franchise mode as the Chiefs. I turned home field advantage off, and I'm going to let the AI determine the better team on all pro difficulty 
with 15 minute quarters. We get started with the Chiefs on offense from their own 19. Kelsey catches it for a six yard gain and it appears that Taylor Swift is in attendance for tonight's game. Isaiah Pacheco actually gets these natives started off right with a 10 yard rush. Pat then finds Rice at midfield for a 13 yard gain. And again, he has a man open. Pac-Man goes for the interception. He misses and Valdez Scantling takes it in for six. The felons get on offense and once again are looking for revenge. Vic tosses it to OJ on the screen and the juice gets them started with a 10 yard gain. On third and two, Vic finds Cheetah, the woman beat up for the first down. OJ is back at it again. It takes several men to bring him down. And on second and four, Vic takes a shot at the end zone, but it is picked off by Sneed at the one yard line. The Chiefs manage to get out of this predicament with their back against the wall, which based on prior history is uncharacteristic for some of these Bills defenders. But on third and six, I knew they wouldn't let them get far. The Chiefs tried the screen, but they were met by Hollywood and Ray Lewis. The scoreless Bills are back on offense, but they get a strong start with a 34-yard reception to Des Bryant. They give it to OJ, and he takes it for 17 yards. Vic starts barking at his team to run the audible. He finds Irvin. They get the first down on the 18-yard line. But on third and nine, the pass is no good. They are lucky to not have been intercepted, and they will settle for the three points. The Chiefs are back on offense. First play of the drive, Mahomes throws it to Darren Sharper, who plays for the Bills. The Bills have amazing field position, and OJ improves on it with another unstoppable drive up the middle lane. Vic finds Des Bryant on second and nine for the first down. Michael Vick has time in the pocket. He takes a good look, but decides to run it in himself. They can't catch him this time, and the felons go up 10-7. to we're back in the second quarter. Taylor Swift is still here. We're going to miss half the footage of the Pacheco run, but I just wanted to make sure everyone, including all the Gen Zers, knew she was here. The Chiefs have moved it up to the 16-yard line, but on first and 10, Gastineau assaults Mahomes for a 12-yard loss on the play. But that isn't going to stop this machine. On third and 17, he finds Kadarius Tony for a touchdown. I didn't know he was still on the roster, but the Chiefs are now up 14-7 on the felons. The Bills get back on offense, and out of the gates, they throw it to Des Bryant for 28 yards. OJ Simpson is a man on a mission. He carries two defenders on his back for another first down. But on third and two, the Bills cannot convert. Tranquil knocks down the pass when he definitely could have intercepted it. This man clearly has something to live for. The Bills hit the field goal to make it a one-point game. Both teams accomplish nothing for a few minutes, but the Chiefs start off this drive with a 22-yard pass to Tony. A man is open again up the middle. Rice comes down with it for another 21 yards. And a few plays later, somehow Tony comes down with this one. That took a lot of flexibility to pull that off. A couple of the Bills players just fell in love with him, so he might want to be careful making his way back to the locker room. The Bills go down eight, but on their first set of downs, they find Aaron Hernandez open. He makes a man miss. He makes it all the way down to the three yard line, but Vic ends up finding him open again for the touchdown. Going into halftime, somehow the Chiefs still hold a one point lead on the Bills, even though they are being beaten in every category. The Bills start off with the ball in the second half and on the very first play, Vic finds Hill open downfield. He almost pulls away for the touchdown, but he was pulled down at the other 46. And on the next play, Des Bryant is wide open for the touchdown. The Bills go for the two point conversion. Jim Brown is wide open, but Vic isn't known for making good decisions. He throws an incompletion and the Bills remain awkwardly up five points. You'd expect some of the Bills defenders to come out with a real boost of energy after halftime. <laughs> But no, they let Valdez Scantling come down with a 42-yard reception. Mahomes is now hot. He moves the ball up to the 11-yard line with another quick throw. And on second and six, he throws towards the end zone, but Pac-Man Jones comes up with a huge interception. The Bills try to capitalize on the following drive, but OJ drops an easy ball that would have given them the first down. For the love of God, give this man some gloves that fit. Mahomes takes over on offense, but once again, he is picked off by the defense. This time it goes to Ray Lewis. And from their own 47, Michael Vick finds Michael Irvin open deep downfield, and the Bills are up 21 to 33 on the Chiefs. The Chiefs have some making up to do, so they give it to Pacheco, who shows off his new light-up sketchers and gets some 13 yards. They keep moving the ball upfield with the short throws, and on third and three, Mahomes spins out of the pocket and somehow delivers a dot to Rice for the touchdown. The Bills are on third and 11 from their own 33. Vic escapes the pocket. He has room to run, but he has Hill open downfield but the 99 overall drops it. The Chiefs pick up right where they left off. Tony proves that he is a better receiver than Hill by catching this and taking the hit. 
After a flag and sack, the Chiefs have it on second and 22, but Pacheco finds a way to make it third and inches, which ends up in a first down. But on the next third and eight, Lawrence Taylor forces his way into the passing lane, and the Chiefs have to take the field goal to make it a two-point game. The Bills got back on offense and responded by going three and out. And before the end of the third quarter, the Chiefs flipped the field and put themselves in scoring position after back-to-back -back big gains. From the 21-yard line on third and 10, Mahomes misses Kelsey on what would have surely been a touchdown, and Swifties around the world are shocked. The Chiefs still end up taking the lead with that drive. They hit the field goal and are up 34-33. to The Bills come out and have another incredible drive. The Chiefs are still hot and are quickly making their way towards a touchdown. From the 28-yard line, Mahomes throws it towards the sideline, but Ray Rice comes to the rescue. He picks it off at the 30. He's off to the races, but did you know you can save more when you bundle your home and auto? Patrick Mahomes takes him down at the one-yard line. Although, to be honest, there is no stopping OJ Simpson in this situation. He brings it in, and the Bills are up again. They go for the two-point conversion to go up seven, but once again, they cannot convert, and they will remain up five. The Chiefs have the ball again, and Valdez Scantling extends for the best catch of the game. And on third and six, the script writers are deep in their bag. Kelsey is wide open, and he takes it in for the easy go-ahead touchdown. The Chiefs go for the two-point conversion midway through the Taylor cam, but they can't convert. The Bills come out on offense, and are still making bad choices in life and in football, so they give it right back. The Chiefs start this drive off with around six minutes. They can't miss, and they keep burning clock. They brought it all the way down to two and a half minutes before Travis Swift caught another touchdown to put the Chiefs up 47-39. to The Bills have to score quickly. They still have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning. And yeah, Ray Rice just ran right through the Chiefs' defense undetected. They take him down at the 42-yard line. If only he was that sneaky in real life, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. The Bills' offense has suffered in this second half, but it's going to be pretty hard to screw this field positioning up. Vic takes it himself and slides to around the 15-yard line. On the next play, Vic finds Hill near the end zone, and with little over a minute to go, Vic finds Des Bryant open for a touchdown. But on the dreaded two-point conversion, they don't even get a chance. Of course, one of these linemen took a bribe in this game. They let Vic get sacked, and they are still down two points. The Bills go on to fail the onside kick, but their defense steps up and gets two stops in a row on the run. And on third and nine, they not only stop the first down, but they force a drop. So with a minute of game time remaining, the Chiefs have to punt the ball, and even that doesn't go well for them. And on second and three, Michael Vick runs it out of the pocket again. He makes it to about midfield and is even pulled forward for a few extra yards. The target line is now two yards in front of them. They try making it real easy by hitting Aaron Hernandez, but he drops it. So with 10 seconds left, they give it to the old reliable OJ Simpson who broke the game and brought it to the 45-yard line. The Bills call their final timeout. They are two yards in front of their target for Sebastian Janikowski. It's all up to him and his foot to decide the ending of this game. But the Bills come out in Hail Mary formation. They chuck it into the end zone and chuck this game away. If that isn't the most poetic way a bunch of criminals can end a game, I don't know what is. It appears no one can beat the Chiefs this year. I'm sorry, 49ers. The script is in. Looks like it'll be 42 to 27 Chiefs and include one slow, passionate kiss in the middle of the field at the end of the game. But thanks for watching. Let me know who I missed. Feel free to argue with each other in the comment section about the Ravens Chiefs game. YouTube, please be chill about my monetization. And I will see you in the next one.